there is nothing like a dinosaur dig in Montana. I've been on three dinosaur digs, and I must say, have I had enough? No! I came back for more! Yep, I'm back once again for my fourth dinosaur dig in 2014. Wait, it's 2015 now? Well geez, why didn't I get this video done in the first place? Well anyway, it's better late than never in my opinion. So without further ado, here's my field report from 2014. Well, I'll begin this video by teaching you how to find dinosaur bone fragments in the Morrison Formation. In this quarry, the rock is mudstone, and that makes the dinosaur bones black. However, if these fragments are on the surface for a very long time, they'll turn blue because the oxygen turns them blue. And when you find these, you look very closely at them, and you find little pores. These pores indicate that this is a dinosaur bone. You can even test this by putting it on your tongue, and if it sticks, it's a dinosaur bone. I think it's stuck. It really sticks on there. Okay, we've covered the small stuff. Now let's cover the big stuff. Because that's what I came back here to see. You may have remembered in my last video that I said the sauropod neck was articulated, right? Well, this season, we came to a dead end. Unfortunately, the neck isn't complete. So we couldn't find the skull this season. But, on the bright side, at least we still have most of the torso. And the torso can tell us a lot about the position of this animal when it was buried. Uh, so Nate, uh, what side do you think this animal died on? It's left side or right? Uh, he's lying on his left side. Right. No, left. <laughs> oh, right. Left, right? Correct. Right. Right. Left? Left. Right. Correct. <laughs> the sauropod in this quarry is a chimerosaur. But it's possible this could be the new species I mentioned in my last video, Montanosaurus wildeni. Back in 2005 through 6, Nate and his team discovered a new chimerosaur that he named Montanosaurus wildeni. In fact, the first Montanosaurus was found only a few hundred yards away from this quarry. The bones of these animals are slightly different from a Camarasaurus, but they're related nonetheless. Montanosaurus may not be published yet, but it's only a matter of time until it is. Hey, I think the guys just found something. That's the ugliest Allosaur tooth I've ever seen. But it's still, cool. it's still two. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Nick. Do you think you can? <laughs> well done, Nick. All of a sudden, now it's gone. We got two teeth in one day. That's impressive. Oh yeah. This third allosaur tooth. It's crazy. <laughs> well, this is a first for me. I've never seen allosaur teeth in the field. They have been found before in this area but I've never seen him or even witnessed anyone finding one. So this is a real treat. So I guess now I should talk about Allosaurus. Allosaurus was the apex predator of its time. Smaller than T-Rex, but it was still the largest predator of its time. Measuring up to 35 feet long, or even longer in some cases, this dinosaur was perfectly evolved to kill and eat other dinosaurs. So the question is, would we find an Allosaur skeleton in this quarry? Well, no. In fact, large carnivorous dinosaur skeletons such as Allosaurus are hard to find because if we look at modern day ecosystems, we can see that there are more herbivores than predators. It takes a lot of herbivores to support one carnivorous dinosaur. So it's very unlikely we'll see any skeletons of Allosaurus. However, shed teeth of carnivorous dinosaurs are pretty common. Carnivorous dinosaurs are like sharks and alligators. They constantly shed their teeth 
when one gets old or broken. And it's not just the predators that do this, it's also the herbivores as well. They too also shed their teeth when they get too old. So, we have no allosaur skeletons, but we do have teeth. Well, it looks like it's time to map out some of these bones. Mapping out bones in a quarry is very important on a dinosaur dig. It's like a crime scene. Mapping out each and every bone can reveal the secret on how these animals were deposited. Here, Nate is mapping out a stegosaur femur. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll actually have this on our grid after uh, limb we set up the grid and we, we move up the body, I'm going to be able to project that grid all the way over to here. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually put in the distance, the orientation of the tape, the angle, and I'll also be able to put in the orientation of the bone and the length of the bone. And then I'll just look at the photograph and do the silhouette. Now that we have mapped this bone out, we can get it out of here. What we do is, we make a protective cast that will protect it during transport. First, we get some burlap, and then we get some plaster. We wrap it all around there and let it dry. Movie. This pro <laughs> Oh, you got it on me too! Right on. Lovely. Oh, cheap shot. Well anyway, I guess this is time to introduce our last dinosaur, Hesperosaurus, aka Stegosaurus musi. This dinosaur was discovered about a decade ago in northern Wyoming, originally called Hesperosaurus, but now some scientists say that it resembles a Stegosaurus too much, so they call it Stegosaurus musi. There's at least four of them in this quarry alone, but what's strange is we both have oval shaped plates and tall oval shaped plates. So what's going on here? For a while it stumped Nate, but one of Nate's interns named Evan has actually did something very interesting with the JRDI's stegosaurs. He believes that this could be the difference between male and female of the species, and he wrote it all about it in his senior thesis at Princeton University. I'll leave a link in the description below so then you could read it. And I suggest you read it because this is an awesome dinosaur. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed my video. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching. What? You don't like the ending of my video? Well, I'm sorry, I got nothing else. I mean, at least I didn't end the video like The Sopranos where the screen just went